Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. So today it's the episode 3.5 of the how to make plant cells zombie style of game in Unity. And I know that this video was kind of a long awaited one because I actually accidentally forgot to show it on the video last time. So here it is. And just let me know guys what I can do next in the episode 12 I believe we've reached so far. Yes, episode 12. Alright, so let's get started. So I guess for today we only have to explain the pea shooter and the zombie attacking system, which are two pretty much um, easy systems to explain. So let's take a look at the attacking system for both. So let me switch over to this. Here we go. So the zombie controller, uh, here you go. So we have a zombie controller script that we've created. Uh, where it is? Here it is. And in this script, um, as you can see, we've referenced to the zombie scriptable object, all right, which has a lot of attributes such as the zombie health, the accessory health, and so on and so forth. And we've ac we've also accessing the accessory. All right, as you can see, because some zombies have detachable parts. And then we have the speeds, health, and attack interval, is in damage. And then a boolean is, is attacking, and a game object target. So this game object target actually refers to which plant this current zombie is attacking. And the attack interval simply refers to how long this zombie should wait between each successive attack is attacking is a simple boolean to show that the zombie is correctly in the attacking phase. If it's if that's true, then the zombie is actually walking. And then there is the damage, which is self-explanatory, and the damage audio. All right. And um, here you go. The attack is here. We've got it in an enumerator. A coroutine is better because we want to repeat it and we want to have delays in, as you can see, yield return, wait for seconds, attack interval. This simply waits for the amount of seconds referred to the attack interval. So here we have to have is walking set to false because the zombie is not walking anymore. It has to stop. So we set that to false. And then we check if the target is null. If it is not null, then we can apply a damage to that target. All right. If it is, then we are not doing anything. Then as you can see, we are correctly uh, saying to the animator component that, hey, we want to stop the walking animation on the zombie. That's why we've set that to false. And is walking is the animation name the parameter for the boolean and again we want to set the attack trigger so it displays as if the zombie is attacking and that's pretty much it and then we call the coroutine again here and we actually call this attack coroutine over here um, here you go as you can see so we check if the we are colliding with something if we are it must be a plant if it is a plant and that the game object has a plant manager attached to it we set is attacking the true we set target to the collided object and then we start the coroutine attack and if we exit then target falls and is attacking false as you can see and that's basically it so target no. So let's just have this only if is attacking is true. All right. So if if target that equals to well to prevent some bugs if they might be. So that's the script. So now let's just go ahead and look for the plant attacking. Here you go. So that's the plant manager script. Again, we have 
a game object reference to the bullet prefab. All right, so that's the actual P that uh, the plot is shooting. Um, later, there is the explosion as well for the mine, so that's not compulsory. It depends on the plot. And then there is a transform for the shoot point, which refers to where the bullet should uh, get thrown. All right, that's the initi uh, initial position of the bullet before it starts moving. Then again, we have the range, the speed, the damage, and all. And here we have a game object for the explosion, which is simply the small particle effect for the mine. And then that's done. Again, damage radio is here, mine particles. And here is the attack. So we have to wait until we can we finish tracking the plot. So if you are taking a plot from the above slot, all right, if we take the plot from the above slot, for instance, here, and we are dragging it, we actually don't want the plot to just start attacking the zombies because that's not the way part of the zombie uh, game is. So we need to wait for it to actually be planted in order to start attacking. So that's why we've how we have this here. So what does this mean? It means that it waits until this boolean is set to false, which is initially set to true, then it, it continues with the code. So if that's not a mine, all right, if it is not a mine, then we'll have to detect if the speed is greater than zero. That I believe is for the actual sh uh, bullet, right? If the speed is greater than zero, then we cast a recast from the actual shoot point, as you can see, from the actual shoot point to the right range, and we want to filter the layer mask to zombie layer only. Then we can draw a ray just to visualize it. And then we, we detect if it hit something. If it did, then we have to make sure that this is a zombie. So we compare the tag and then we instantiate a bullet. We, we simply refresh the damage to the bullet, right? How much damage does the spot do? And then we add some velocity to the actual bullet, as you can see here. Then we wait for the fire rate for X amount of times to go by, and then we start all over again. And that's pretty much it. And then we start uh, discouraging in the start because this has to go forever really for the lifetime of the block. And yeah, that's about everything. So for the potato mine, we detect a collision. All right. If we detect a collision, we have to do two checks. One of them is, is this a mine? And the second one is, is this fully grown? If both are true. Then we compare the tag, is this a zombie? If yes, we set the particles active and we deal the damage to the actual zombie and then we just destroy the, the object, this one, in about 1.5 seconds. And same thing here for the trigger exit. And that's about it. So if you want to see how the damage works, it's really simple. We play the audio, all right, whichever audio, uh, it needs to play, and then we just decrement the health with the amount. And yeah, that's about it. So guys, thank you again for watching. And I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Until then, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you have not already. And leave a comment suggesting any other things you want me to start, maybe new series, or maybe you want me to introduce or add some new features to this uh, series. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.